welcome to Kanpai Planet. I'm Mac. I've lived in Japan for 15 years and I'm about to embark on one of the biggest adventures of my life. I'm going to spend one week making Japanese sake and I'm doing it on one of the most magical islands in the Japanese archipelago, Sado. Join me on this special journey into the heart of Japanese culture. We enter the Koji room on day two to find things just a little different to how we left them. So morning, day two, we were just checking the rice, which is, had the magical effect of the Koji kin working on it. The grains have separated. The rice has hardened a little. After about 24 hours, the Koji mold has propagated to the point where these white spots become visible. Once that happens, it's time for the Mori stage, dividing the mound of Koji into these smaller trays to control the temperature more easily. The Kurabito did that in the middle of the night while we were all sleeping. The goal has now shifted from encouraging mold growth to managing the level and distribution of that growth. We're breaking up the rice clumps into individual grains, allowing the rice to aerate. After about five minutes, we gently flatten out the surface and cover the trays again with blankets. On these outside benches are trays with finished koji, which is about 24 hours older than the koji rice we just worked on. It's really sweet. You're starting to get some hints of the future Nihonshu taste. Absolutely amazing. We carry the finished rice koji to the walk in refrigerator. Keeping the rice warm promotes koji growth while cooling slows it down to prevent overgrowth. It wouldn't be a day of sake making without some extensive cleaning. So this is what I've really come for, the bag washing. They all know what a big fan of this I am. This time it's even better. We've got to wash each bag twice, then turn it inside out, and then the next bag. So in total, there's 160 bags. I wish there were more. I've been told to stop the bag washing because we're going to the rice field. Disappointed. The Obata Shuzo rice fields are in Nibo, about 30 minutes drive from Gakogura. Our route takes in a couple of Sado sites. First, a stop off at the local football pitch because one of my sake making teammates, Takashi Kitano, used to be a professional J League footballer. Next stop, Daizen Shrine. 
Here we see one of Sador's oldest North Theatre stages. Or Batasan Springs, a quick rice quiz on us. Or Batasan explains, Sado Island's rice growing history began when intensive gold and silver mining started in the early 1600s, at the beginning of the Edo period. Sado Kinzan was one of the largest gold mines, and you can still explore their tunnels through a cool mixed reality experience. Good luck finding any gold though. More than 50,000 people needed something to eat and drink, and rice fit the bill nicely. And where there's rice, there's sake. And a number of breweries sprung up to slake the population's thirst. Now, five sake breweries remain on Sado, all tapping into the island's nutrient-rich water supply. At Obata Shuzo's rice fields, near the small town of Nibo, they cultivate their very own special sake rice. They work closely together with skilled farmers like Tadaaki Aida to grow Koshi Tanra and Gohyaku Mangoku varieties. Sake rice differs from table rice in a number of ways. It's larger in grain size, has a lower protein and lipid content, and a large starchy core known as the shimpaku. A sake's flavor is mainly impacted by the brewing processes, the rice polishing ratio, and the type of yeast used. But rice variety also affects the final product. The rice we're using for our gakkogura sake is koshi tanre. Koshi tanre is the child of two of the most common rice varieties, Yamada Nishiki and Gohyaku Mangoku, and a great example of terroir in sake brewing. Niigata's brewers wanted an original local sake rice with a similar taste profile to Yamada Nishiki, but with a bigger grain than the Gohyaku Mangoku variety, which allows for higher polishing ratios. After 18 years of development, they created Koshi tanre which has all of its parents' strongest features. In 2007, Koshi Tanre Sake finally hit the market. Since then, at the National New Sake Championships, it continues to win plenty of awards. The rice fields are a juicy insect buffet for the rare toki birds, the Japanese crested ibis. We're very lucky to get a glimpse of them in the wild. The toki is the symbol bird of Sado Island. They were almost extinct, but thanks to rebreeding efforts, around 450 birds have a happy home in these rice fields and mountain pine forests. After a tough morning of washing bags and walking around rice fields, it's time for lunch. On Sado, we're surrounded by ocean. So I've come to Chozaburo, the locals' favorite sushi job. The smell of burning salt is delightful. Here's the master showing us his catch of the day. And it really is quite something. Back at Gakogura, it's time for rice washing. Senmai. The Koshi Tanre rice we're using has already been polished down to 50%. But it all has to be washed before steaming. Over the course of one week, that's more than 700 kilograms of rice. Washing rice removes undesirable bran, nuka, that's still stuck on the surface of the white polished rice. Ideally, you remove all the nuka without allowing the rice to absorb too much water. Washing also improves the texture of the resulting steamed rice. Machines came into use around 1920. Technological improvements mean they can now wash as effectively as the hand washing method. They blow fine air bubbles through the water, replicating hand stirring, bringing each grain into contact with the water and removing all the nuka from the rice. 
After washing and being left to sit, the rice is then soaked. This is called shinseki. Importantly, each batch is soaked for the same amount of time, so our timing has to be perfectly synchronized as we place these heavy bags into the tub. Soaking time is exactly 12 minutes, so that each grain absorbs water equivalent to about 30% of its own mass. More highly polished rice, such as the rice we are using, polished to 50%, is drier and more porous and will therefore absorb water more quickly. Master brewer Toji Nakano visually checks the individual rice grains, observing the water absorption each time until the target level is achieved. If the time is not precisely controlled, the rice will absorb water far beyond the ideal ratio of 30%. If that happens, it won't steam properly. To get this just right, brewers use various techniques soaking the rice in small batches, using cold water to slow down absorption, and precisely timing the soaking. Soaking can make or break a batch of sake, so it has to be executed perfectly. We take our positions to remove the rice. and hold it for 60 seconds, letting the excess water drain out. It's an excellent isometric exercise. Check out the biceps. The Kura workout. No need to go to the gym if you're making sake. Reminds me of my karate days. After soaking, the rice must be completely drained and is left to rest overnight before steaming. As my mum taught me, you should always clean up after yourself. We're going to check the koji rice. Snap it. <laughs> Wake up, Koji. We remove the blankets from the trays containing our Koji rice and immediately conduct the all important temperature check. <laughs> Koji Nakano gives a thumbs up, so we begin piling the rice to the center of the trays being careful not to spill any over the sides. Rice is money. We then gently turn the rice from bottom to top. And the aim of all this is to again aerate the rice. Uh, if there's any lumps, you want to just separate them. So it's a pat pat, all separate. <laughs> Koji Nakano goes around with his orange scoop, equalizing rice volumes in each tray. After flattening the rice, he measures the depth. It should be about two knuckles. Now it's our turn to flatten out the rest. <laughs> When flattening, it's tempting to pat the rice down, but you need a soft touch. Polished down to 50%, these rice grains can be easily damaged. <laughs> to make sure we get that two knuckle depth, we need to decrease the surface area of some of the trays. <laughs> We all do the final checks and measure the temperature again. 
carefully placing the thermometers so the tip is in the middle of the layer. Cover the trays with hessian cloth and wait for the temperature to rise again overnight. End of day two, some more bag washing and then the next steps in that all important Kochi production. We even got to experience some rice washing. Brilliant, cannot wait for day three. That's a wrap on day two, another fantastic day. Coming up on day three, a look behind the rice steaming curtain, making the last batch of Kochi, more rice washing and meeting the mother of sake. Join us, making sake on Sadov.